Yeah, well, thank you everybody uh, for jumping on uh, here and sticking around. Uh, the presentations uh, so far have been really good. So I'm gonna try to keep uh, keep with that. Today's topic, uh, data security for the data-driven enterprise. Uh, a lot of what uh, we're gonna be talking about, Ron was kind of summering up here at the beginning, but uh, just really quick about myself and then I'll, I'll turn the camera off. Uh, James Beecham coming to you from Austin, Texas. So if there's any other Texas folks on the line, uh, hopefully everyone's doing better uh, this week than we were last week. Um, so just stay, stay strong in there. Um, I am one of the founders of the company uh, and the CTO here, um, and uh, really excited to talk to you all today about data and data security. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do uh, a, uh, a, a full live demonstration uh, of a customer journey and some customer problems that we solve. So uh, for the folks that uh, do live demos, send me all the juju uh, that, uh, that make these go well, but uh, we're going to have fun here today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn, uh, turn my camera off now. Uh, and uh, we'll start uh, start down this this path. So when we talk a lot about data with customers, um, you know, the first thing people think about is large enterprises are the only ones that have data. Um, but what I'm here to to kind of say and to reinforce uh, is that that is just not not true anymore. Um, uh, businesses of all sizes uh, are uh, collecting information and, and analyzing it, and that's really the trend. Uh, that I wanted to focus on here today with with, with folks um, is this this trend of the cloud data warehouses, whether it be Redshift, which Ron mentioned, we're we're a big partner of AWS, Snowflake, uh, which we're also a big partner of. Um, you know, all all of these um, platforms are removing the silos of data that folks have from the operational world, um, combining it into a single place, uh, that cloud data warehouse, and and also combining information from many different SaaS and third party providers. Um, so this this journey and this kind of trend towards business analytics, insights, all of these things uh, is happening across across enterprises of, of all sizes. Um, and because it is data and it's also business driven uh, decisions, it's actually intersecting a lot of our different roles together at once. Right. There's security involved. Compliance is involved. Line of business is involved. I.T. is involved. Um, so a lot of these solutions and journeys uh, are, are kind of whole whole company efforts. So that's what we're going to be focused on uh, here today. Again, is a consolidation of data uh, into these cloud data warehouses from from your on-prem legacy areas. And you know, one thing that that we continue to see happen, and I'll use kind of a story here to to uh, allude to it, is you know, you get started, you stand up your your Redshift cluster, you stand up your your Snowflake instance. Um, and you start uh, putting data in. This is maybe you've your executive buy-in is there. You've all made the decision that, that you're going to go ahead and do this. And so you start grabbing easy data. Um, you you grab maybe your your inventory information or some of your your marketing spend, your Google AdWords uh, data, and combine that with a couple other sources. And you're well down your your way down the path of this data journey, and you're going along really well. A um, couple of weeks, couple of months go by. You you add some more third-party services. You tie in some more SaaS data. Uh, you start adding uh, more of your information into that uh, that data warehouse, uh, and it's going really well. You're getting some good insights, uh, and, and the company's having fun doing it, and they're they're benefiting from from this. But um, inevitably, what happens in this journey um, is you quickly find yourself on the edge of a canyon, um, and and the edge of this canyon is the realization that in order for you to continue down this path and get to the other side or the goal, which is extreme ROI of your data, uh, business in insights, drive new revenue, uh, control losses, things like that. Um, you know, the, the inevitable realization is that at some point in time, you're going to have to bring in what, what we call sensitive data into that cloud data warehouse, just as an example. Um, that sensitive data could be your customer's information, like PII, it could be your employee information, uh, which is still PII. Um, you could be bringing in protected health information in order to continue to leverage the power of these cloud data warehouses. Um, and so what you end up realizing is that between where you are today and where you want to be is this very large canyon. And the canyon can be very scary. Uh, it can have privacy monsters and compliance alligators and, and, and breach scary snakes and all of these things that are, that are between you and ROI on your data because the data is valuable and the data is sensitive and, and you know, it's your responsibility to, to use that data in a way that your customers uh, you know, trust and, and believe in you in. And so inevitably you're going to get to this data canyon. Um, and when you get to this data canyon, you, you either have prepared to address this canyon, that's the security first 
uh, mindset where from the very beginning of your cloud data warehouse project, uh, you built security in uh, and you brought it along with you and you carry it in that backpack with you uh, for that first part of that journey, uh, or you react to coming across the canyon, uh, not, not unlike a lot of the uh, early explorers probably when they would get to a mountain range and either have to go around it or go through it. Uh, and they would size up the environment, uh, look at what tools they had and, and, and make an adjustment and go. Um, and so what I'm here to tell you is that with the Alter platform, uh, either of these approaches are possible uh, because we're very excited about our, our, our SaaS security offering for the cloud uh, data, data warehouses. So either way, you're, you're going to get to this canyon. Either way, you're going to have to navigate it correctly if you want to get to the other side. What's on the other side is success, is this, is, is more revenue, is, is higher growth, uh, is, is getting to a point uh, where your company is, is actually making money uh, uh, whether it be internal savings, increased revenue, or new revenue streams uh, from this information. So how do you cross the canyon as you're standing there looking at it? Uh, what we found and kind of what, what customers are, are really getting good at uh, is answering these three questions. Uh, if you can answer these three questions with, with your security team, compliance team, privacy, legal, data, line of business, IT, everybody, is we're all together in, in answering these questions. And they're very simple questions at the surface, um, but you know, un until recent developments have been very hard to answer, especially for the cloud warehouses. So the questions are, where is my data and who is accessing it? Very you know, sim simple question on the surface. Um, you know, what am I doing to lock down this access to only people that need the data? Uh, and you know, I'm thinking about RBAC and views and other things as we look at this, but also extending those policies beyond kind of creating fail safes for the business. Um, uh, in, in very easy, easy ways. And then lastly, how can I be sure that my data isn't going to be stolen or, or misused? Um, you know, the, the advent of the credentialed access threat uh, really, really makes businesses need to think twice, second and third times about giving access to data and then being, being able to control uh, access to, to this data. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take a snowflake instance. Uh, that's just what I, I've been using lately. Uh, and I'm going to take an Alter uh, SaaS platform, uh, and I'm going to show you all uh, today in real time here in the next 12 minutes uh, how we can answer these three questions. So um, let's go ahead and, and jump in uh, to this here. Uh, everything is live. Everything is real. So uh, just kind of bear with me as I click around and do all these things. Uh, Alter platform here, SaaS based, uh, no code uh, uh, required to enable security across uh, many different databases. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I have my Snowflake uh, data instance connected, but Alter supports uh, a, a whole host of databases in here, as you can see, both on-prem uh, and SaaS-based. So as you're watching this uh, and you have an on-prem Oracle or, or an on-prem Microsoft SQL, don't, don't tune out. This, this all applies to you as well. Uh, I've gone ahead and added uh, my Snowflake database in there already. Just a very simple uh, you know, type of uh, administrative console here, and we'll, we'll be using this uh, piece for, for it all. But what we're going to talk about first is uh, uh, how I can understand uh, how my data is being accessed and, and who is accessing uh, that, that, that data. So, um, you know, quickly here, uh, I'm logged in as my sysadmin. Uh, if I wanted to, let's say I did my data discovery project, which Alter can also provide for you, and I determined that that last names are sensitive and that I want to know every time a, a last name is, is going to be uh, accessed. And the nice thing about this platform, again, the Alter platform, is it's all SaaS based. So there's no infrastructure to stand up. I'm not having to uh, configure any proxies or change the way that my users um, are, are using data. Uh, Alter has a native integration into Snowflake uh, for this to happen. Um, and so when I go ahead and tell the Alter platform about a particular column, uh, we are communicating now back and forth with Snowflake and setting policies. Uh, the goal of this policy uh, is to create uh, an audit record uh, every time that data is accessed. Um, so now that I've gone ahead and I've, I've added this last name column from this uh, Alter DCG trial table here, if I come into uh, my Snowflake instance and I wake up my warehouse here and I'm logged in as the sysadmin. So from a, a user's perspective, uh, this is a, a very high level uh, piece of access. Uh, and, and one of the you know, type of use cases that we see customers asking about uh, all the time around, you know, how could I maybe monitor what my admins are doing and, and what, uh, you know, is all going on within the system here. So our warehouse is now awake, we ran the query, uh, and you see we get data back here as this sysadmin. 
Um, and so now what's going to happen, and, and the thing I wanted to touch on while I was here is the alter policy was enabled as part of that uh, within the system. So I can run it again here with my warehouse uh, wake now, and, and we'll see some different uh, different time results there. But um, what's happening now is, is alter has communicated to Snowflake that this particular column last name is important uh, to the business, uh, again, from this alter DCG trial table. Uh, and regardless of how this column is accessed, whether it's accessed directly in a query inside of the Snowflake web UI, you'll notice that I'm I'm directly in Snowflake here, so no proxies or anything like, like that at all. Um, the system uh, automatically makes requests back to Alter in the form of our query logs. Um, and you can see our log just came in here. Let's see if it's from our timestamp 211. Yes, it is. Uh, and you can see that I have an information about a request to a particular column uh, that I told the system to watch. Uh, I can see that it was me, James, logged in as the sysadmin role. Uh, it happened at a particular time of day. Uh, here is the query. Here are the number of rows that were returned with that query. Uh, all of this is done on a per column basis. And that's a very important thing for, for us to note. I know in the security world, um, you know, we're tired of excessive signals and we get a lot of noise uh, in the world, especially around cloud data warehouses, there can be a lot of noise. Uh, Alter's uh, policy, uh, is on a per column basis. So if you just want to track and trace your sensitive columns, you can do so very easily without generating too much noise. Um, all this data is stored within the Alter platform. You can grab it uh, from the web interface. You can filter it. You can make API calls to us. Um, we also export this data in real time uh, to third-party systems via S3. Uh, so if you have Splunk or QRadar or Sentinel or, or any other log aggregation system, uh, you can get all this data in real time about how folks are accessing uh, within Snowflake. And again, because the policy is over the data within Snowflake, it doesn't matter how they're connecting. It could be Power BI, it could be Tableau, it could be Python, uh, all of these things that happen natively for us here. So we just answered the first question of, of, of who's accessing my data and, and where is it? So we we're able to do that, that was good. Uh, now let's lock down this access. Let's say after we have decided and seen that sysadmins are doing this, um, we, we don't want that. We, we just want our data science folks uh, to look at PII. So I can come in here to the Alter system. I can select uh, my data science users. This is through Snowflake and my last name. And what I'm doing is I'm creating an Alter lock. Uh, and this is a concept that extends RBAC, it extends views, uh, and is again built natively into the Snowflake fabric. So if I come back over here now as my sysadmin and I run this query, what we're going to find is that the user does not have access to this data any longer. And in fact, Alter stops the, the query completely and tells the end user that you don't have permission to run this query. And it's because this last name is a part of the query here. So pretty cool that you can, from SAS, stop access to data directly. Now, to be clear, uh, everything is still functional for my data science role, for example, right? Because I, I allowed them to have access to this data. So if we just run over here quickly, uh, we'll see that our data science user still is able to come back uh, and get information. Um, so really, really neat uh, in the ability to, to do that. Uh, now we're, so that, that's the second question that we just answered, right? How can I control access to this data? Uh, now I'm gonna make uh, a policy in here that's going to uh, answer our third question for us. And I'm gonna talk about it here in just a moment. Um, and what I've just done right here in real time as you watched me is I created a threshold. And a threshold in Alter's perspective is all about limiting consumption of data. So you can think of views, you can think of role-based access, and you can think of locks uh, as being the first dimension of a table security, right? Column level security. Um, the second dimension is, is in consumption, the number of rows that come back per query. Uh, Alter has the ability to limit access to data based upon access rates. Uh, you could also limit access to data based upon time or, or location. Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, pick an action if your rule is broken. You can block data. You can slow data access down. You can just generate uh, an alert. We call them anomalies uh, back out to your system. Uh, but everything is all done and configured via SAS. I put my my data science uh, grouping in here. I want to watch in particular the data science users. And I'd set about 500 uh, values per, per day here in the system. So uh, if we come back over to our query feed here uh, in just a moment, if we haven't already, we have registered this data science 
uh, user has, uh, has exceeded uh, that threshold in here. So if I come on back over to the alter system where I just ran that query uh, and was successful uh, in getting data, you can now see that because I have turned on that threshold policy, which limits data access to 500 rows per data, and my previous query broke that, uh, I'm now getting a different result back for this particular data science user, which is blocked, which means that James, the person logged into the role data science is now blocked from accessing this information. If there was another data science user, Kelly or Peter, uh, that is logged in as a data science role, they are treated independently uh, from this. And I know that we're talking about Snowflake and I'm just using them here, um, but, but Redshift, uh, Microsoft SQL, Oracle, all these databases are, are supported. Uh, and, and Alter has many different ways in which we integrate, not just the cloud integration piece, but we have database drivers, we have APIs, uh, you know, so it's very flexible for you to integrate into your workloads and applications. Um, last piece here, and then I'll, and then I'll wrap up. Um, an alert is generated, we call them anomalies. Um, all this information about this misuse of data is captured and collected, uh, can be sent back out uh, to, to again, to your SOCs, your security teams, your log aggregations. Uh, we support full SOAR type operations. So if you're a, a large enough and mature enough enterprise, you can respond to this uh, uh, you know, natively and, and automatically. But what I wanted to wrap up with is, is again, uh, the understanding that these three questions are, are posed to businesses of any size. We've seen, we've seen companies as small as 10 million in revenue all the way up to 10 billion in revenue need to answer these questions. Um, and the way that you can do it, the easiest way that is brand new uh, and, and is one of a kind is the Alter no-code cloud native platform. And what we just saw from the two product offerings here that Alter has consumption governance and protection is we answered the first question with Alter observe. We answered the second and third questions with detect and respond, but we can also answer that third question around how do I make sure my data does not get stolen, misused, mistreated Alter offers tokenization as a service as well, all SaaS based. Um, and so if you wanna have a single vendor that can control, that can do your observation, your, your data in motion and your data at rest and do it all without any infrastructure, uh, Alter is the, uh, the place where you can do that. Uh, we are of course credited uh, and we work really hard to maintain these. So we're a level one PCI service provider. Uh, so we tokenize uh, credit card information uh, and PII information. Uh, we have customers operating underneath the HIPAA-sphere. We're obviously a SOC 2 Type 2 uh, compliant organization as a SaaS vendor. Um, so hopefully it's, it's clear to you all how, uh, you know, this new, this new phenomena of the cloud data warehouses are, are picking up across all businesses. Uh, the problems that come with these, though, uh, are real uh, and the consequences are severe. Uh, and so just think about those three questions. Can you answer them today? And in the last 10 or 12 minutes here, you just saw me uh, answer these questions for a for a snowflake instance. So hopefully um, uh, you all uh, enjoyed uh, the presentation as much as I did giving it. Um, visit our website, uh, come come check it out. You can get a free trial of Alter uh, online. Really simple to use. Uh, 